Hey everyone, this is Flint Iron Steel. We're gonna be doing some more missions. We're gonna be doing the rest of the uh, training missions in A10 Cuba. So we've done takeoff, we've done landing. We're gonna do air to ground. Uh, we can do a weapons loadout, a default one, which is this, or we could go a little bit in depth. So I'm gonna throw some harms on here. Um, high-speed anti-radiation missile and it is an anti-radar missile right here the harm stands for a high-speed anti-radiation missile that's all it is air-to-ground missile 88A 88 alpha so AGM 88A harm uh, accelerates up it accelerates does accelerate the Mach 3 but then that's only that only lasts for solid fuel rocket so only it, it fires for I believe about four seconds and after that it's at Mach 3 and then it's on cruise and it's on cruise and it'll lock onto a target from 40 miles away so it's pretty decent so we're gonna go ahead with the aim nines we might turn that off there's no air, air to air um, enemies in this area so it's all ground targets so we could do oh, let's see Let's do harms. Let's do three. Hmm. Can I do three? No, it's only one. Okay. So I'll do hypervelocity rockets. Hypervelocity rockets. Harm. Two thousand pounds worth of fuel. We got three Mavericks. We got three five hundred pounders, Mark 82s. Um, we really don't need the 2,000 pounders or anything else in this area in these stations 5 through 7. So we're good on that. So we're going to go ahead and click OK. We're going to look at our mission map. Take off. We got a bunch of targets here. We got stationary targets here. Targets here. Targets here. So these little clusters are usually tanks. These ones in a line are white targets with red circles. I believe this is a radar set. These are same thing, white targets. These are tanks, white targets. And I think this is a radar. And then you go back to base. And that's it. So, hmm. Oh, there's dirt airstrip. I didn't read that. Okay, we can do the Randalls. Do the Randalls in uh, 5 and 7. Okay, we will go ahead and fly this thing. Okay, click. All right, so we're loaded up in the cockpit. We're gonna set master arm on. Sorry, frustrated. OBS didn't want to cooperate in the last recording, so I wasted 18 minutes and the cropping was wrong. So, excuse me for a second. All right, all right. Let's go ahead and start taxiing out. Let's see if our wingman are doing stupid crap. Yep, they are. All right, so they only have AGMs loaded. All right, so I got loaded with. I'm loaded with a lot of crap. So we're gonna enable our harms. Now I can't remember if the. If the radar signatures, if the radar bands are actually active, they're typically not in this mission in the air to ground. Come on, guys. All right. We're going to do a cheat. That's not the shift tab. It's not the instantly add 1,000 feet or 500 feet of altitude. We're going to do another one. It's called triple time. And triple time is enabled by pressing Alt or Command and then T. So now we're going triple the time. So it makes going 10 knots seem a lot faster. It it cuts down on the taxiing time and everything else, which is, will suck up most of the time in this mission and other missions that are involve a lot of taxiing and going across like uneven ground 
Uh, for the Cuban map, there's a few airfields that you take off from, and the ramps are just dirt. So. Okay, Alt-T, turn off. Full throttle. Attack in. On. Bear bitch pressure turned off. And we take off. Um, we're going to head towards the next waypoint. Uh, we should do autopilot, but I'm not sure if I'm going to actually do it. Alright, we're coming up 140 knots. We've got the green light. Pull up. Hit G to raise the gear. D, delta. To let, uh, sorry, to raise the flaps by 10 degrees. Press delta again, raise the flaps 10 degrees. Alright, so we're above 200 knots. Like I said in the landing video, if you ref if you forget to retract the landing gear after takeoff and you increase your speed past 200 knots, you will damage the gear. Even with an indestructible aircraft enabled. So we're going to slow down because now we're at 300 knots. We got master arm on. We are completely armed. Let's see if we find a radar signal. I don't think we will. There is a radar van out here, but I don't believe it's active. Yeah, there he is off to the left. Not active. Alright, so, I don't know, man, there's supposed to be, there's supposed to be a dirt run sh runway, they're, they said there's a dirt airstrip, it says there's a dirt airstrip in the description, I don't know where it is, I searched for a good 15 minutes in my last video before I, you know, before I had to fix it, because this stupid cropping was messed up, but, before I had to abandon it, actually, if I searched for like a good 10 minutes, I couldn't find this stupid thing, I looked on the map, couldn't find it, anywhere. So, we're going to turn off our harms, we're going to turn on AGMs on the TV monitor on the right hand side, you can actually zoom on stuff, so shift up arrow, we'll zoom, press 7 to follow your rocket, or follow your missile anyway, good hit. Alright, so we're going really, really fast. Uh, there's a few other targets over here for CCIP mode only. Again, before I had to abandon my other video that had horrible cropping. Uh, CCIP does work. I just can't get it to work. Um, we can try it again. Alright, so we're going to do straight at the target. Let's see if it loses. Alright, that was, that was me automatically. Oh, it did it. It did do it. Look at that. So, it does work. You just got to get used to it. The best method I found with the dumb bombs stuff that's not laser gu guided or there I say the retarded ones they actually have the drag fins on them enabled uh, the best method is to just calm down low point your nose at it and then just drop it off drop them off so we're gonna circle back around and hit one of these targets I'm gonna hit one eventually because <laughs> I can't get CCIP to work. Alright, I come in hot. You kind of just guesstimate. Good hit. There we go. That's how I usually take out targets in A10 Cube in the combat missions. You do have to be careful with the 2,000 pound bombs, is that if you get too close, too close to the ground, too close to the shockwave, the shockwave will propagate outwards like it does in real life, 
and it will destroy your aircraft. It will knock you out of the sky. Not like disable your engines, it will disintegrate the aircraft. Uh, you'll see in like the airstrike mission, in, my, one of my, in a later video, uh, if you destroy the ammo dump warehouse, which houses about 16 2,000 pound bombs in the model, before they all, they're all suspended in the air, and once the uh, warehouse is destroyed, they all fall to earth. And there's a boom, 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 you know, that kind of thing. Multiple su successive uh, explosions. And that shockwave will d in turn destroy the other, the other warehouses. Then those concussive shockwaves will reach upwards and destroy your wingmen. And, if, and you if you have indestructible aircraft turned off. So basically any ally that's in the area, any aircraft that's in the area actually, so friendly or enemy, will be blown out of the sky by the concussive shockwave. So, <laughs> be careful. That's all I have to say. Alright, so we got some more targets on the right hand, the left hand side. Uh, our autopilot's making us go all over the place. So we're going to be flying through the canyon and following the waypoint and really not much to say but like I said, uh, not like I said, I should reference anything else because I really didn't have anything before this. Parsoft Interactive had one good guy that was instrumental in the early days of flight simulators Let me turn tack on back on uh, Eric Parker he used to do he did other polygon graphic games like Hellcats of the Pacific which was released in I think 93 and it was polygon graphics as well but from what I've heard from in you know uh, there's a there's a video I could link to in the description from Silicon Classics but they have a good review of uh, A-10 Attack and A-10 Cuba, but mainly A-10 Cuba and a history about Eric Parker and, and Hell's Castle of the Pacific. I played a couple demos of it back when they were on the uh, three-quarter inch floppies. So two floppies or whatever, and that was the complete game. Uh, the flight model was pretty good. Um, probably the graphics were terrible, you know, well, it's 93, so I'm not expecting miracles, but the flight dynamics were very impressive. Um, granted, most of the aircraft had, the Hellcat model was trapezoidal, with just two wings stuck on, if you looked at it from the third person view. But it's okay, it was, a, it was a decent, it was a decent air-to-air, air, air, air combat flight simulator. In a time that a lot of people were moving towards, it was kind of like Sega Genesis 16-bit graphics and 32-bit graphics. There was no polygon-based flight simulators. There's a few, but they had a kind of a cult following. They're kind of forgotten. But so Eric Parker joined Parasoft, Parasoft Interactive, or he formed Parasoft Interactive. And uh, made A10 Cuba. A10 Cuba is based upon, based in the area of West Germany. Large map, very large map. Uh, it, 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 I think it had like maybe 15 missions, but you can kind of customize stuff. You had the basic scenarios, and you could actually do it with the virtual battlefield environment. You actually could do. Uh, Custom missions. They could have F-16s, F-15s. You can add them, um, add chits, add add. Uh, they were called waypoint chits, but add aircraft chits, and then you can add uh, like F-15s or S-16s to run a full throttle, af a full afterburner escort run around a dam by Hamburg. You could do that. You could do a bunch of other things. Um, there is pretty. It's pretty fun. Um, the AI in it wasn't the greatest. So you could actually dogfight MiG-29s. In this game, in A-10 Cuba, you cannot dogfight dog fight any MiG-29s. Mainly, they pursue you. 
Um, they turn so fast. They turn so fast. They got full afterburners. They got everything. So, it's not very fun to dogfight with them. So, it's best to just be the Pursue E and just turn as hard as you can to save your life. Um, your best offense or defense, whatever, however you view it. I'm just shooting all around them. Your best offense for the MIGs is to use your radar warning receiver to lock on to the actual radar dish that's all the radar radiation that comes off out of the MIG-29 nose. So when they're facing towards you, they have the highest signature, the highest uh, radar signal. So you can just lock on with uh, pressing H, hotel, so it's handoff, the Hoff on uh, RWR. Oh, oh, oh. Oh, oh, done. Ah. <laughs> All right, screw it. All right, so we're done. We're upside down. We're on the floor. <laughs> so, yeah, you can do a handoff like that and uh, lock on to that radar signal, radar signature, and you just fire out the harm. And uh, harm is a very heavy missile. It will disable both engines in one hit. So, there we go. That's our final shot right there. We're done with this mission. It's going to say, oh, you succeeded. Good job. But the same voiceover. Well, you made that look easy. And you're just a kid, too. But I'm upside down in the dirt. Out in the desert someplace. Next to a river. How's that success? Oh, well. Anyways, guys. Uh, hope you enjoyed. This is Flint Iron Steel signing off.